so we just released the song so long and i wanted to kind of go over the history of what we did on it kind of like what we did with some of the other videos and so this song here is is this is the third song that we started doing during the whole pandemic yeah that sounds mm -hmm. right yeah this one started out just as a keyboard line idea that i had and i actually recorded it on a phone so i my phone so i wouldn't forget it so i didn't actually do the keyboard as midi but then i recorded a drum line using hydrogen so i did a drum beat that was just or something like that like what's the very first one that we have so april 4th 2020 okay what's that one sound like Already off the bat, compared to the other two songs where we've done these reviews, like yeah, this stuff pretty close to home. Like yeah, we didn't switch yeah. a lot on this one. We added organic instruments like drums and bass, no guitars. Interestingly, so it started with that back and forth, that bum bam. It started out with that. It's only got like three chords in it. It's pretty distinctive and hooky. I mean, like yeah, I get, well, I get why once you had it in your head, like you, you had to lay it down because like. It's catchy. That lead line, that dun, dun, da, 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 da. I don't remember when that came into play either, but that's, that was actually drawn in the MIDI map on our doer. So that was actually handwritten inside the program in MIDI. And then did the drum beat, which the drum beat is actually, oh. I know where I got the drum beat from. Uh, that was inspired by um, a Latin Playboy song. The program drum beat was that we, later on we used the actual, or Rob actually played drums on it. Yeah. Vocals version two. A couple days oh, later. Oh, Rob found the song that I used. So no, no. Oh, dang it! I we have got to edit. Yeah, this I wanted to do that. Yeah, song. I know we can do that, that because song, it'll yeah. get caught. Yeah, it'll get caught. I'll edit that out because it'll totally get caught. But but what's the name of that song? Ten believers. Ten believers. That's where I took it. I, so I got the drum line from Ten Believers. So when we first started taking notes on it, I was just trying to think of vocals. So the next one is from August fourth. And a few days later, you have more vocals, version two. And then song idea, Rob drums. You know, I obviously recorded the bass. This is the one you use the uh, bass ukulele for. Yeah. The rubber strings. Yeah, rubber strings, actually. Not, it's not nylon at all. Like, I don't know. You don't even have that hooked up, and the bass actually it came sounded, through. Yeah, that sounded sweet. It sounded really good, even just you sitting there. Yeah, yeah. You can really get, and and I think it shows in the song. You can get some really kind of big, boomy, kind of upright kind of bass sounds out of it. Is this the first song we've used it on? Yes, this is the first one. And then after that, I think we set. So did we try different drum beats, Rob, when we were trying to do this one? I couldn't think of what we put down originally. So play the. Yeah, play the Rob new drums. So yeah, this is the first one. Yeah, so we were just we were just going over the song and just, you know, goofing around one night. And I had the Zoom recording, and we played it, and I just played along that drum beat. It all started with, you know, just, um, you know, just jamming. Was it when we were on a call one night and listening to it, you had your drums hooked up like you do now, so we're able to hear your drums while we do these calls. Right. And that I think you may have actually started just yeah. kind of goofing around with it, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, and we actually made you yeah. stop. We stopped yeah. everything we were doing and we were like, let's hook it up to record. And then we had you play it. You guys were all learning GitHub and we're trying to yeah. upload it and figure that stuff out. And then it was taking you forever to upload it because for some reason your upstream was really, really slow. And then it didn't upload yeah. properly the first time, I think. From having a uh, 
network cable strung across the house from one end to the other. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you're in your garage right now, aren't you? Kitchen. Yeah, all to the kitchen, you know, everybody tripping over it and then me taping it down. He's like in his bomb shelter right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. And then from there, then we kind of dissected it and pulled it apart. And then um, we, I redid a new drum track. Yeah, it was a few weeks later, it looks like. And this yeah. will give us a chance to hear, we still haven't heard vocals or the new bass yet. Just how it began is still vague. What I want is still the same. I Quick question. What was your inspiration for the vocals? Like, where did you, it's very different from your normal vocals. Is it because it was such a kind of washed 80s, early 90s vibe that you just want to go for something different? Or, or were you at home and you needed to just keep it on the down low? No, no, I recorded it out here. I actually record it in this exact same setup that I have right here. I was sitting at the table in our practice space and tracked the vocals while I was sitting here coming up with the idea. And the way I sang it, I just liked it. I mean, it was much like the last video that we did. I just recorded it really quiet. And for some reason, I wanted to do the voice when I did that. But it's, it just felt <laughs> right when I was doing it this way. So I did. And uh, I think, and then I added the high vocals very quietly in the background just to give it some kind of depth to so when it switches parts it seems like something changed rather than just my voice doing the same thing so yeah no i just sat here and came up with the vocals they came really fast too it was more it just came to you it wasn't like you had some inspiration that you're going after or anything no like that. no i don't think so and i just think because of the lyrics it would be weird to like kind of <laughs> blast those lyrics and already the bass line that you did made such a difference it seems so much more flowing rather than the yeah. don't 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 that it originally was doing it felt like something needed to play that role yeah, yeah. it's not it's often not the bass that does it but like in in this case it's just like again like i couldn't help but wanting to keep moving because it's so fun to play in that i'm like so it just kind of made sense to do it on that and here's another note on the drums too. I remember we dug that part so much and originally I thought like, oh, then I can take out that drum line that I wrote. And for some reason it lost it completely. Like the groove was gone completely. It just seemed so empty without that programmed drum line backing the drum line that you did, Rob. Yeah, and I had recorded my drum part with that in the background. So it incorporated that. It, and it was weird yeah. too because the drum line is actually very rigid, the program drum line. And yours right. is just kind of like, do, 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 you know, it's kind of like bouncing back and forth. And yeah, that one I is like, do, 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 do. I wonder if it was like, half sonic, like as far as like not necessarily rhythmic, but like there's just something that became smaller on a frequency level more than like a rhythmic level. In between his drum parts, you can hear the program drum line. You know what I mean? It's not, it's yeah. not overshadowing the actual drums that Rob played. He's For not, some reason, it sounded wrong without it. He's not finding yeah. his inner ginger baker. Yeah, mm -hmm. we needed something to, you know, make things flow. The only other thing that really changed is mm -hmm. that part where it was the uh, sort of echoed chorus, the, the echo reverberated chorus. Oh, yeah. I remember when I first did that, you guys didn't even notice I did it at first. And you were like, well, you should probably turn that up then because if we didn't notice it, nobody else is going to notice it. <laughs> so I turned it up. How did you stumble across that effect? What made, you come up, what made you come up with that? When Eric was listening to one of the sessions, and he always likes to point out what band it rem the songs we're writing reminds him yeah. of. Yeah, and great he idea. pointed out oh, that man, it he's yeah, he's really good at that. And it's helpful too because then it makes yeah. me go, oh, I should start listening to things in this, that genre and see like if there's any sort of thing i'm missing out on that these other bands were doing and he said it reminded him of spoon and it's that one song that they do that has that uh that where the vocals just kind of go reverberate and turn into this distorted noise i wish i could remember the name of the song but uh i tried to do that and uh without being able to do it the way they do because i don't know how they did it i created my own way of like combining i think i chained like three different effects together to try and make that happen and then compress the crap out of it 
so that it would hit really hard. So it would, so it would make those effects work. I think I was work. afraid of overdoing it was yeah, the problem. Okay. So I was trying not to overdo mm-hmm. it. And then it's like, well, it should be overdone because that's the point of it. So it, it's a weird effect. Yeah. And then the only other note that I remember from this entire thing, Cliff, was when you recorded your bass line, you decided, and your bass is kind of very freeform bass. And you were like, oh, hey, if you want to, you can switch that one bass line with this other bass line. And I looked at it and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then you realize you could just do it. And then that was your foray into <laughs> editing more in like learning our doer and like learning how to move yeah. tracks around and stuff, wasn't yeah, it? That, that was the beginning of me becoming at least pro, like a lot more efficient at it. Like, I think we all understood how to do it on some level, but yeah, it was, it was summer last year was like, all right, we're doing this remote. <laughs> we can't all be up to town. I had a version where I cut it up more into like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, very kind of straight and like kind of repeated verse part, repeated chorus part. Like the way it is now, it just kind of gives it a little bit of like a wandering kind of vibe because the bass is like doing stuff down low and then I go up high and like I even left in flubs. I mean, like they're minor, but like I hear them like where I don't hit the note perfect, but it's like it was better than the more edited up version so yeah i'm not it, surprised they it just left it in for this one you know some songs it's great to edit the shit out of it and it works good right on a loop or whatever but and most of the this, times we do one, yeah yeah just out yeah, of necessity of or because of yeah but this song needed something more organic it felt like and, the, and yeah. like the drums and bass being organic i think lifted the song from just a little ditty to like feeling like a real song Just how it began is still vague What I want is still the same I know that I took that away And there's nothing left to say Just can't ignore what was said Nothing left to say